what you get and what was sent to me. So you can actually get this drone as a bind and fly ready to go straight out of the box with an O4 Air Unit Pro inside for $354.99 or without the O4 Air Unit Pro, which was what I got sent. And that was for, I think, $105 which is actually a really good deal, especially as I mentioned when I did a past review of the Pavo Pico, because this allows you to swap in a air unit. At the time it was an O3 air unit. So now I can swap in an O4 air unit pro from another quad. And it was actually really simple to do as it was literally just screwing on the canopy with the O4 air unit pro inside onto the drone and then plugging in a provided plug that was already connected to the flight controller and plugging that straight into the O4 Air unit and ready to go. So as well as the O4 Air unit canopy or bracket, whatever you want to call it, you also get the COB LED strip for nighttime visibility, which is a cool touch. Also comes with extra gem fan 2218 three blade props, as well as this little adapter, which allows you to plug in to the flight controller via a USB-C cable, which if I'm being honest is Kind of my only gripe about these beta FPV cine whoops as these things are small and easy to misplace or even break and without it you cannot actually connect to the flight controller if you want to get into beta flight and change any settings or rates or anything like that. The motors are Lava 11004 7200 kV motors and the drone also has 2.2 inch props and in my experience so far this has offered a very good thrust to weight ratio. So let's move on to the noise. So noise level in Cine Whoops is an issue that I've had in the past. I'm pleased to say the noise level of this drone is also very impressively quiet. Considering it's a Cine Whoop, as it doesn't really have that high pitched shriek that we've heard before on other drones. DJ Vata, first version and you know other drones that we've had in the past like protech they've all had very hard plastic ducts for durability which definitely contributes to a higher pitch shriek this drone doesn't have that it's still noisy for sure but it sounds more like a fly buzzing around rather than that high pitch shriek and this coupled with the fact it looks more like toy than a professional quality drone like the dji avata 2 definitely means it can be used in a lot more scenarios in my opinion with more people around or smaller proximity type flying more built up areas which opens up more possibilities with this drone i'm really impressed with how stable this drone is straight out of the box it's super smooth and stable even with some more aggressive type movers and considering its size its weight and the fact that it has prop guards it can even handle breezy conditions pretty well definitely much better than i expected anyway Overall, with the recommended 3S 550 milliamp hour battery that I've been using, I've been getting anything from four minutes with aggressive high throttle punch out type freestyle flying to five minutes with just really crazy fast forward flying with a you know camera angle of 30 degrees plus with a more consistent throttle, less punch outs, and even up to over six minutes with much slower, more chilled cinematic flying with you know a camera angle five to ten degrees something like cruising very slowly indoors or in between trees in a forest which is pretty good for a drone of this size and also a quick shout out to bfpv for really being mindful of the o4 air unit canopy design or bracket design to make sure that the camera angle can actually be tilted up higher than 25 degrees for faster flying this might not seem like a lot but i've tried cine whoops and owned cine whoops in the past that for some reason don't factor this in that somebody might actually want to try and fly faster than 25 degrees camera angle with this and it kind of hits hits the top at that angle and you can't go any further which is really I think is just a lack of detail or attention to detail in my opinion now let's talk about the image quality and this is more to do with 
DJI than it is to do with Vita FPV because it's the O4 Air unit Pro, VTX and camera. And if you use the DJI O3 Air unit in the past, you'll definitely notice the upgrade in quality. The O4 Air unit brings definitely more video clarity, low latency, also the ability to record up to 4K at 60 frames per second in 4x3 for post stabilization in gyroflow, which is absolutely game changing for aerial videography in my opinion. The image quality is so so good no more action cams or naked gopros required on these little mini quads uh the weight of the pavo 20 pro it weighs in about 67 grams without the o4 air unit and about 73 74 grams with it also with a 3s 550 milliamp hour battery the total weight is about 150 grams or maybe just less making it very lightweight and agile for its class so talking about the flight performance in, you know, ideal conditions, not too much wind, not too much breeze. The Pavo 20 Pro is, I have to say, an absolute delight to fly in these conditions. Um, the combination of its lightweight design, the tune, the powerful motors, it's just able to deliver more agile maneuvers, very responsive. The O4 Air Unit Pro also, like I mentioned, provides a very crisp, low latency video feed, enhancing the overall flying experience. Now that's all well and good, most drones these days, these bind and flies, they fly well straight out of the box in ideal conditions. But how about performance in less ideal conditions, which for cine whoops generally means a bit more wind, definitely breezier conditions. The Pavo 20 Pro definitely does perform pretty well in moderate winds. Not amazing, but it's definitely usable, definitely flyable. Its lightweight design does make it more susceptible to gusts of wind. So you want to be mindful if there are gusts, probably this is not the drone that you want to be flying. But as I said, it you know, it might drift around in stronger winds, but it's definitely flyable. These kind of drones, they are made for non-windy conditions. So just bear that in mind, you know, if, if you're going to have this as the only drone in your fleet, you probably want to avoid those windy conditions. Can you push it further? I.e. can you do some like light freestyle with it, maybe some dives, maybe some split S's, things like that. I have tried that as well. And considering again, the lightweight frame plus the powerful motors, it does actually allow for very nice quick descents and a responsive throttle control. Definitely making it suitable for capturing those kind of like very dynamic shots where you sort of dive towards the ground to, to catch up to something. Or if you want to just go over a tree and split S it, things like that. It's actually pretty good considering it's a cine whoop. Not ideal by any means because those kind of drones are more likely to be undacted freestyle drones but this one it can do it like it definitely can do it i'd say the only overall downside of this drone is its durability that is obviously to be expected as this is not a bando bashing drone and with it being designed to be lightweight that means lightweight materials that can inevitably snap and break fairly easily but the upside to this i would say is that replacement frames and other parts of this quad are readily available on the Beta FPV website and are actually very, very cheap. So when you're looking to buy this drone, definitely get yourself a couple of spare frames, a couple of spare motors. They are cheap and they're definitely worth having just in case you do run into something and you know the frame snaps, you'll be ready to go, you know, in the matter of maybe within an hour, you'd be able to change that frame out and you're ready to go again. Some overall thoughts on the Pavo 20 Pro with the upgraded O4 Air Unit Pro camera is that I actually don't think it gets much better than this currently. I'm so, so grateful for what we have now from someone that has struggled and I mean struggled with attaching naked GoPros to small cine whoops for years to get that ideal camera quality to finally be able to throw all of those little naked GoPros that are finicky, sometimes work, sometimes don't work, throw all of those in the bin and just have an onboard camera that shoots beautiful 4K up to 60 frames per second footage with D-Log M for a flat color profile that you can grade nicely, plus being able to stabilize it beautifully in gyroflow and all that in 150 gram package. That in my opinion is the definition of a game changer. It shoots the same quality footage as the much bigger, heavier, more expensive DJI Vata 2, but in a tinier, less threatening package. So it feels like if you have something like the DJI Vata 2 and a drone like this in your fleet, you're kind of sorted for all scenarios when it comes to using cine whoops, such as indoor flying or flying around people in proximity so in my opinion now getting cinematic fpv footage has never been easier 
And if you want more tips and tricks on getting the most cinematic FPV drone footage possible, then go ahead and check out this video which I made, which has all of the secret sauce.